And we are live. Okay, this is kind of funny, but Heather couldn't be here this week, and it's my turn to host this Skillshare session with Rita Sagoni. Rita is a programmer who is doing uh, crazy things as a fellow with School of Data. She has a social science and philosophy background, which we love about her. And now she's going to teach us a lot about database design. What does that mean? Uh, many times when we're doing trainings with School of Data, we use databases that are ready, like you download it from some site. But other times, we have to do this gathering of data. And we've had uh, skill shares in the past about how to work with offline data and topics like this. And so when you're trying to translate this into an online format or, well, a digital format, uh, there are some things you should take into consideration when you're designing this database. And this is what Rita will be speaking about today. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please, and you have any questions, please leave them on the comments box, and I will have Rita answer them. If you're following this on Twitter, then just tweet at School of Data or Escuela de Datos if you're speaking Spanish, and we will take a look at those questions for you. Uh, this is a part, as I said, of, of the Skillshares sessions that School of Data fellows are running all over the world. And you can find in this YouTube channel all the other uh, past sessions. And you will be able to find sessions in the future. So I will leave you with Rita now. Hi, everyone. So. Uh, yes, we're going to talk about today a bit about database design. This is going to be quite a practical introduction. So um, I have a spreadsheet prepared, and we're going to do some step-by-step -step database structuring and data cleaning. Um, and this is going to be so. These are mostly going to be um, guidelines and um, best practices. So in my view, nothing is set in stone, and uh, much of how you approach uh, designing a database um, depends uh, on your data and what you would like to do with the, the data, what your goal, goals are. So um, what's, what's a database? Basically, it's just data, a collection of data in, um, in an organized form. And um, um, it, it makes it easy to store your data in a structured way and to manipulate it, uh, manipulate it um, as easily uh, as possible. So, for for in order to design a good database, you have to know your data, and you know you have to know what you would like to um, achieve with it. Um, I will, I have a PowerPoint to um, make this a bit more easily followable. So let's see. OK. Um, so um, I mentioned that the important thing is to know what your goals are. Um, so let's take this, or let's break this down a little bit. Um, what, uh, what can be your goals with the data? In terms um, of usage, there are two basic types. Uh, of databases. Um, it, uh, the one is uh, for um, creating, which, so ma which is mainly for cr uh, creating data, um, updating, uh, and deleting records. So um, it's if you think a typical business application like um, like an online shop. In the online shop, you've got you've got um, products, a bunch of products, which uh, some there are new ones introduced, there are uh, others well, which leave the leave the market or or which which you don't sell anymore. You've got customers registering, they are placing orders and modifying orders and deleting them, and, um, and you fulfill those orders and close them. So there's a lot of modification going on. Another type um, of usage of databases is um, 
when uh, you have your data set and uh, you don't plan to plan to modify it uh, that much, but mainly you want to do analysis uh, based on the data. You want to uh, query your data, query your data, and um, find patterns and reorganize and summarize. And uh, I will mostly talk um, about this uh, this letter letter usage. So the, the, um, the most basic tool for, for this kind of um, this kind of data manipulation analysis um, is uh, spreadsheets. Um, and um, well, in many cases, spreadsheets are not even considered um, a real database. So if you're talking to a developer, then in in, <clears throat> in most cases they uh, mm, they will mean a database management system uh, by a database and not a spreadsheet. What are the main differences? So uh, spreadsheets uh, can be accessed by one user at a time. So you have a spreadsheet, spreadsheet it's, it's on your computer, and if you want to collaborate uh, on the sheet, um, uh, that's well. That's not not uh, very easy to achieve. While with a database management management system, and um, it's uh, it's run on servers, and multiple users uh, can can access it at the same time. Um, also, spreadsheets have well quite uh, quite serious size size limits. Um, Excel version two thousand seven. Um, can have um, about a million rows, but it it tends to get real really slow um, at at um, a small smaller size. So so if you have that much data, you you better use um, a database management system. And uh, as I mentioned, the spreadsheets um, are mainly good to store data for querying. And the database, and it is quite, um, well, quite, quite difficult to to make modifications and track them and, and to keep data, keep your data consistent if you do a lot of modifications in a spreadsheet. Uh, however, however, in a database management system, it's um, it's much much um, easier to create and update and delete and modify your data, and uh, and keep the data set consistent. Um, so um, a spreadsheet can accommodate um, a flat database, which is basically just one table of data. And um, in a database management system, you can have uh, so-called relational databases, in which um, tables um, are organized and can be can be related to each other, can uh, can be can be joined. So uh, we'll, uh, uh, sorry for interrupting, interrupting you. But can you give like uh, a, a few examples like on how examples it looks how like this? Like what it looks like, like uh, relational like database. Relational database. Um, I will ha um, have an example um, at the end, but I will show you right away. I will just. Switch to switch to the other screen to share. Okay. Because I feel yep. like we've all seen flat spreadsheets, but maybe there are some people. Yeah. There are some people. Yeah. Um, seen relational ones. Relational ones. Um, I'm planning to go into a bit more detail um, at the end, but I will show you um, how how it looks like in a spreadsheet. So. In this case, um, you have um, um, you have this is a simple database with with two tables. You have a company table, in which um, you have an ID of the company and um, some uh, some fields for it, like its name, type, and state. And in the other table, um, you refer to the company by that ID it has in the main company table. So you don't have to 
list all the information. But in the other table, you just if you want to refer to a company, you refer to its ID. So th uh, this is the uh, this is the main uh, <coughs> um, main property uh, of relational databases that you can in such a way uh, you can link two tables together. Um, awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, does this sound good? I will I will um, explain it a bit a bit um, more uh, more detailed way at the end. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Cool. So um, yeah. So why um, I will I will keep. Uh, this um, keep the spreadsheet open. So this is gonna be our first um, FAT database. So as um, um, as Maria mentioned at the beginning, so it is important to know a bit about databases because in some cases you have you have a com complete database and complete data set, and um, you don't have to do much uh, with it. Uh, besides start using it, but in many cases if you collect your own data, maybe through surveys or uh, um, if you scrape um, data from the internet, then uh, you might have to build uh, your own database from scratch. And it is a good idea to really think it through at the beginning because it is quite tedious to, to change the structure once you, once you establish it. Um, so first thing, if you have your data, um, look at the size. So if it's if it's really huge, if it's if it's more than a million million rows, that's that's a simple decision. You have to go with something else in a spreadsheet. Um, um, and it's it really you, you you get a quite low performance. Um, after um, a few hundred thousand records, and um, then you should think about the purpose. So, at first, in quite general terms, what are you going to? What the database stores, and um, what um, you're planning to use it for? It is. It can be a good idea to write down uh, the purpose of the database on paper. Um, like for for this one, uh, the database stores information on lobby firm spendings, and um, we plan to use it for analysis. So at this occasion, I will present a bit this spreadsheet we're going to be using. Um, I uh, the data is um, mainly from the site Open Secrets. And uh, um, it is a database um, of companies, uh, companies lobby spendings by year. So this is uh, in the amount column, the sum of the companies spending uh, <clears throat> in in each year. Um, and um, the 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 raw data is from there. I've made a few modifications for uh, for like presentation purposes, so this is not accurate. And um, I've made uh, most of the company times types up, so this is this is not the database you find find there. But uh, the basic structure is is from uh, from Open Secrets. Um, it is also besides the general purpose, it's also a good idea to to write down or think about what kind of analysis you would like to do with the data. So um, maybe you will want to know um, in each year which company spent the most. Um, so so to, to have, an, have an overview of what kind of queries and what kind of analysis you would like to do with the data. Um, Let's talk a little bit um, about the structure of a table. I know you're familiar with it, but just to have uh, a few key uh, key key concepts. So this um, num 
this is one one table of data and it's um, it's a matrix of rows and columns and each row is also co called a record a record is just um, just some meaningful and consistent way to uh, to combine uh, information so in this case um, it's in each year we have we have one uh, one uh, spending amount amount for each company. So for, for each year, uh, each company appears only once with the sum of their yearly lobby spending. And uh, in each column, you have um, or or in each field, you have um, one single item of information. And uh, that item, that that information, like the company name, the type, the uh, amount of spending, and the year of spending, uh, they appear in every record, and they appear in the same order. So it's um, important to keep in mind that a record can contain data only about one specific item. So, um, in any case, you should not mix, um, for example, spendings of two companies in one in one record. And also, a uh, record has to store all the available information of that uh, of that specific item. And um, about on the columns, it's um, it's important to have to have the headers for each, the name um, in, um, in the top field. Um, so now, um, as we have the overview, we can go to some structuring and uh, refining and uh, cleaning of the data. Um, a very important principle to keep in mind is um, uh, you, it's a good idea to store information in the smallest meaningful logical parts at a quite granular level. What does that mean? So in, in this case we have um, the company names and at the end you uh, have the type of the company. So um, initially um, it was just uh, in the database it was just a company name um, but I split it split the type uh, of the company to, uh, to a separate column. So um, this um, gives much more um, power and uh, possibility for analysis. So you can, you can now um, query by type. It's for example, um, yeah, you can check uh, which kind of, uh, which type of company uh, has um, has spent most um, on lo lobbying, for example. So it, and this uh, it is a good idea to to do this um, splitting up at the beginning because it is much easier to uh, combine this uh, this uh, information. And um, but but if you don't uh, don't uh, do this breaking up at the beginning. It, it will be uh, much more much more difficult to to use the um, the parts later in uh, in the analysis. Um, the next step is to check um, for duplicates duplicate entries. Uh, they not only waste waste uh, space, uh, but they also um, increase the likelihood of errors and of having having inconsistencies. Um, it's uh, quite easy to do it um, in Google Spreadsheets and also in Excel. Um, Google Spreadsheets you have um, a function called unique. And um, you just have to specify the columns. In this case from A to D. And um, we can see at the length that it's uh, it's a bit shorter, so 
it seems we had we had uh, we had a, f a few duplicate values. That's super useful. That's super useful. Yeah, and um, you can just you can just delete uh, the initial columns. Oops. Yeah. No. That's uh, the second step first. Um, so this, these are um, defined by the by the function. So firstly, um, I copy uh, the new values and paste with paste special, and I do paste values only. So so in this case, I won't have um, the function in the background. I only have the visible visible values. And normally if I delete yeah. If I delete I have the values. Okay. And I format these to make it more visible. So that's a nice trick and that's uh, that's something important you should do quite at the beginning. Um, 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 other thing which might cause confusion, uh, if you have um, some values in different forms, for example, for the company type. Um, um, you have, for example, LLP, um, limited liability partnership in different forms, and association in in full length and in and with abbreviation. And this also if you're doing a query, uh, then then if you query for for example ESO, then you you won't have um, you won't have all your records. So you can check it with a filter. Um, if you put a filter you can see what kind of values you have. And it's uh, quite easy to get rid of the, the wrong ones. For example, I would like to replace, I would like to use the, the, the abbreviated form and um, get rid of the full one. So I do find and replace. And um, I would like to, and this one, and replace it. Put this one on in the sheet. Matching case. And it's standard. Now it's standardized and you have the same same uh, form, the same value for uh, for every record. And I should do the same for for all the, the different types, which I can which I can check here. Um, another thing, um, this so this is starting starting to look good, but there are few things um, uh, which can still cause confusion. Um, the amount cell. Um, I have the dollar sign in every cell, but in this case, it is not recognized as a number. So if I, for example, I would like to sum up three values. I get zero because they are interpreted as text. So I will have to get rid of those uh, dollar sign. We're going to use the same um, option, find it, replace, and we're going to check for dollar sign and replace it with nothing. Yes, much better. So if you want to sum up. First few values, then that it works now. But um, still, yeah. Sir, something is that is worth adding here is that we're getting feedback. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I didn't hear you. Okay. Great. Uh, something that is worth adding here is that on School of Data, or at the courses section, 
you can find a lot on formatting, like how to make sure that your values in the spreadsheet have the right format so that the whole dollar sign thing won't happen to you. And that's it. Yeah, exactly. It's an important step and it's a bit of data cleaning, but also for design, um, it is worth mentioning because um, when you design a database, um, you, it is good if you know in advance which kind of um, values uh, each cell has. And in, in a database management system, you also have to give the type of value at the beginning when you create a database. And you have to decide whether it will be um, um, text or character sequence or, or integers or, or whatnot. So um, it, this kind of standardization is, is an important point. Um, another um, another um, principle is to um, avoid multiple data in one cell, which we have in a few cases. Um, for example, it might be the case that um, there were two, there was one value for the first um, half of the year, and the another value for the second, and um, this is this is definitely not good design. And um, and you you won't be able to to work with these these kinds of cells um, at all. It's the same problem comes up if you if you want to sum that up. So you have to so you have to split them. And uh, it's also easy to do it in a spreadsheet. Um, I had two columns for the two two new values. And we have the split function. And now we choose the text we would like to split. And the delimiter by which we would like to split it. So in this case, um, we have the slash sign, which, uh, which delimits, which separates uh, the two values. So I'm going to include the slash. And that's it. So in this case, um, we just had one, one value. And with a double click, I can fill um, fill, um, fill the cells cells with the with the function, and we can see that it worked quite quite nicely. And it split at every cell when we had two values. We split it. It split it into two, um, except when when the cell was blank. So I can, add, we can do the same trick as before. So copy the content and do a space based um, special and, um, paste values only. So we don't have, uh, we don't, we, it's not a function we have in the cell, but the, but the result, the values, and get rid of the original column. And that's it. And we can say like amount for the first half of the year. And the amount for the second half or something like that. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Um what else? Um we have uh, this error here, which is caused by empty cells, or more precisely, um, empty on an empty row in the database. So um, it is important to to eliminate the empty rows. Many in uh, many uh, spreadsheet applications like Excel and also Google spread spreadsheets interpret empty rows or sometimes empty cells at the end of the table. So they, they regard it at the end, end of the table. And also if you're running functions, uh, they might they might cause a problem. So it's um, easy to do with, with uh, filtering. So like, nope. I will, I will add filter. Uh, 
here with um, with, our, with the function causing the error so we can just we can just delete the row clear the filter so select everything again and um, it's it's clean now yeah here we have enough to sell so the, um, the next thing is to check uh, empty cells. So when uh, we have some values in a row, but not everything is filled. So um, it is not necessarily bad to have empty cells. So it is not necessarily wrong, but um, they can interfere with uh, with a lot of a lot of functions. For example, when we um, when we use it here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that. Um, but for example, if you use um, the average function, it evaluates zeros and um, empty cells differently. So if you have an empty cell, then the average function is not going to take that account at all. But if you have uh, um, a zero in it, then it's gonna it's gonna be treated as a, as a as a valid value, and it's gonna decrease the average. So it's important to be conscious. Whether you have a missing value, whether you have zero, whether you have um, an empty string. So I'm going to show you another function, um, which um, um, which fills the empty cells. So we I'm going to show it here. So insert a new column, and it's going to be a conditional uh, function, and we'll check if cell is blank. So the JSON cell. We're going to check if the cell is black, blank, and if it is, then we're going to put not applicable instead. And if it's not empty, then we'll leave the value of the cell as it was. Let's see. Yeah, here we have here we have an empty one. So I have to yeah, uh, yeah I have to fill up down to the bottom. So um, here we had a missing value um, uh, for the amount, and um, in the new column we, we replaced it with a not applicable. So just as before, I copy and paste the values, and and I do delete the original one. Yeah, and this, this should be repeated for the uh, for the remaining columns, of course. But I'm, yeah, I'm not going to do that here. Um, we're going to also talk a little bit about relational databases, and for that, um, it's important to have a unique ID for each record, and it's not not a bad idea either um, for a simple flat database. To, to be able to identify every every single record with a unique number. So we're going to insert an ID column. And it's just going to be simply a sequence of, um, of numbers. And we're going to use this autofill, automatic fill. Um, with double clicking and it filled up with a unique ID all all our all our records. Um, and um, a few tips 
about um, the placement of the table um, in the spreadsheet. Um, usually, um, people start at, start a table at A1. It's um, uh, of course, it's um, visually sometimes good, but at times you have um, a lot of um, functions and summing, uh, summing uh, values, summarization values, and in that case, and and the, and the, um, we place those usually at the end of the table and the end of the columns. But sometimes um, it's uh, it's easier to if you use them a lot. It's easier to place them in the beginning and leave a few rows and a few columns at the beginning. And, and you can um, you can put um, your, for example, your filter criteria or your most used functions um, at, uh, at the top. And uh, also for for easier easier handling of the database, um, sometimes it's good to use multiple sheets. Um, for either if you have a lot of functions, you can put the functions on a separate sheet, or on labels or or explanations. So you don't have to cram up everything um, at one sheet, sheet. So this is this is the um, what I wanted to tell about this um, basic flat um, spreadsheet design, um, and I would like to tell a few concepts um, about uh, relational databases. So, um, so um, if you have a lot of data or it's very complex or if you have to do a lot of modifications or if you have to um, collaborate with people, then it's, um, it's a good idea to, to use a database, um, database management system instead um, of a spreadsheet. And uh, of, of these, the, um, the relational databases are the uh, by far the most uh, prevalent type. So if you talk to um, developers, and they usually mean relational database by that. Um, and um, in this case, for this data, one, <coughs> what would be the use case for a relational database? For example, if for each company you had um, additional data as um, the state they are, they are registered in, the zip, zip code, maybe if you had additional columns for the address. Uh, that's a lot of data for one company. And there are, the companies um, are appearing repeatedly, then you would replicate the same information, uh, the same address information again and again. And that would, uh, that would take up a lot of space and um, and also it would be it would be much uh, much more difficult to handle. So in this case, for example, it would be a good idea to to um, create two different tables. So we have um, we would have a company table, which wouldn't consist of anything else, only the companies. Uh, the company information, name, the type, the state, and the zip code. And in this case, it's very important that all of the companies would have um, a unique identifier, um, which, um, in this context, it would uh, it is called um, the primary key. The key, uh, the key for the companies, and in other other table, you'd have the the um, lobby spending information. Um, they would also have an ID, but also, um, in you could track the company, the spent amount, um, and the year, and the company would be referred by their unique ID. So nothing else in the lobby table. 
uh, only the company ID. And uh, you can, by this identifier, which, um, which corresponds to the, the unique ID of the company, um, you can identify the companies. So, um, and uh, if you query the table, or if, so, so if you're using and man manipulating the data, you can join these two tables to, uh, together by the company ID. So this is here, um, the pr primary key, and the same, the company ID is called a foreign key if it is uh, referenced in the in the other, other table, so that would be um, um, a very basic uh, relational database uh, design. And again, this was this was our initial um, flat spreadsheet design when we had all the information in one table, and uh, we split it into a company table and a lobby table. So I think that this, these were the main points I, um, I wanted to, to tell about. So now is the time for questions. I'm checking if there are any questions on Twitter or the Hangout itself. No, I don't think we have any questions here. Um, I'm thinking for people watching this in the future, if, uh, I mean, if anybody watches this in the future and, and they have questions, then at the end we will be giving Rita's contact information and some helpful links. Uh, but meanwhile, I think with that you can continue. Um, thanks. So um, I will switch back um, to to the PowerPoint. So I will. Um, um, I haven't used this much during the presentation, but um, basically the the main points um, are listed here. So. So I will um, I will also um, share this by the video and also additional um, the additional notes. I guess that, that could be useful. So so yeah, that's it. Excellent. Excellent. Okay then. Um, then thanks a lot, and I don't know what will be the next um, skier share, but stay tuned. Um, um, I'm going to say something. You can hear my microphone. Excellent. Uh, uh, so my connection is bouncing now. That's excellent. <laughs> okay. Rita has a good medium to reach her. Otherwise, you can leave questions as comments in this YouTube video, and you can also tweet them. Uh, we're at School of Data, School of Data, and we will leave in the comments box a few, not in the comments box, in the description box some useful links like uh, that has used today, some uh, links to School of Data communities, like there's an Ask forum, so I will link to that. And also, well, the next Skillshare will be on impact assessment with Rahul from School of Data uh, and OKF Central, and all and that's going to be next Tuesday. So, and, and thank you.